started. So this webinar is now being recorded. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is William Schwerin. Um, I'm a part of the recruitment team on uh, the graduate admissions side for the Viterbi School of Engineering. Uh, I do want to welcome everyone today. You are joining wherever you may be joining from. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever, where, whenever you are. Um, really excited about the webinar this morning to go over the computer science department. Okay, thrilled to be joined by a number of my colleagues uh, with within the CS department. Um, joined by Professor Medvedevich. Uh, along with a number of our computer science advisors. So how the webinar is structured today is, I'll give a brief introduction, just some housekeeping, item, housekeeping items, and then I will um, pass the baton along to Professor um, Medvedevich to talk about the CS department, and then um, we'll have some advisor input as well. Should you have a question during the course of the webinar, that's fine. Um, you know, I, I feel like the goal is to eliminate the unknown because you know, you're coming from wherever you're coming from. You have, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. You're really excited about your admission. We're excited to be able to offer admission to you. So definitely ask questions. If you do have a question, we just simply ask that you ask it in the Q&A portion of your Zoom uh, webinar box. Um, so just again, ask your questions in the, the Q&A portion. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and um, and get started. Let me just load up uh, a brief, brief slideshow to go over with all of you before handing it off to um, Professor Medvedevich. Okay, so congratulations on your admission. Hopefully you can all see this right now. Um, we're really excited to be able to offer you admission to the computer science department. Um, it is a very strong department. Um, and as you will learn more from Professor and the advisors. Um, it's just a really great department to be a part of and uh, a part of the larger USC community as well. So we're really excited to, to have you. And we know that you uh, may have multiple options on the table in terms of where to decide uh, to, to enroll. But um, you know we hope USC is up there because we're really excited. And uh, it's a very great opportunity for you. So welcome to Southern California. Um, just some considerations that we uh, you know, like to advise students when thinking about where to pursue your graduate um, degree. So think about you know, the schools that you've been admitted, think about USC, um, location, what the schools have to offer, resources, community, strengths of the alumni network is also a, a big factor to consider. And um, for those of you interested in research, uh, it obviously is not a requirement when pursuing a master's degree, but um, some students do typically like to do research. So um, if there are any research opportunities for master's students, and again, you'll be able to ask questions uh, throughout the course of the presentation, and we, we will have time. We might push it to the end of the hour um, here on West Coast time. We, it's just a little past nine, so we might push it close to 10, um, but that's okay. We want to get your questions um, answered. So... <clears throat> A little bit about the Viterbi School of Engineering and just USC in general. Um, the university has about 44,000 total students, I would say. Um, we actually have more graduate students studying at USC, so more, more students pursuing their master's and PhD uh, than we do undergrads, believe it or not. So we're very different from a public institution in that way. Um, within the engineering school, it's very similar that ratio where we have more graduate students than undergrads. So, we're a tier one research university. There's a lot of uh, strength in the academics that, that our graduate students are learning. So I think that's a strong point that we're able to offer. Um, there's over 96,000, as it shows in the slide, alumni worldwide. Um, we do have a global network of students and alums. Um, I believe currently there's students from about 80 different countries studying within the graduate program uh, at the Viterbi School of Engineering. Uh, a little bit about Los Angeles, you know, our location, if you're looking on a map, Los Angeles is a very large uh, metropolitan city, and we're fairly close to downtown um, for any sports fans, the Los Angeles Lakers, LA Clippers, LA Kings hockey teams, um, their state, their arena is just a couple miles south of our campus location, 
Um, there is a local soccer club as well <laughs> that plays just, uh, just down the street from campus. Um, but we're also right in the center of innovation. So we like to call this uh, area Silicon Beach. Um, California is a pretty large state. Um, just to the north, about a one hour flight, six to seven hours is Silicon Valley. So everyone's here to Silicon Valley. Uh, a lot of these top tech companies <clears throat> looking to expand, found some great real estate down in Southern California along the beach and coast and um, actually have set up many offices down <clears throat> fairly close to campus. And, and it's an area that we call Silicon Beach. So this is really accessible for um, students, especially when you know, um, internships and thinking about internships and um, future career aspirations. You know, a lot of students do get interviews and they just are able to um, take a quick drive or Uber uh, to some of these locations to interview. So um, location is, is key. We do within the university and within the engineering school have uh, career offices. Now our Viterbi career office, I think, Honestly, it's, it's a resource available for students that is underutilized because we have some really great staff that work in these career offices. And um, I always encourage students to <clears throat> reach out to our career offices. They have drop-in hours. You can make appointments. They do host events uh, every semester. And these events are career and internship events, um, both at the university level and within the engineering school, the engineering career office as well will host uh, internship and career fairs, where I think because of our location and the reputation of USC, we're able to attract a lot of top companies uh, looking to hire our, our uh, Viterbi School students. So um, these are opportunities that are available for students, and I definitely encourage students to take advantage of, of those opportunities. In addition to those kind of uh, keynote events, the career offices are there to assist students um, just in, in polishing the resume, uh, they offer workshops for resume writing, interview preparation, salary negotiation, um, and can help advise students um, throughout your journey when, um, you know, it's time to, to pursue an internship or um, looking for that first job, first destination after, after you graduate. Um, they also have <clears throat> really interesting um, guest speakers who come from industry to, to talk to students. And so um, these are held throughout the academic year uh, for students that we definitely encourage uh, to take a part to take a part of. And then you may be wondering where students work. Um, that's a, one of the top questions that myself and my colleagues always receive. And so what happens is every year we um, survey the graduating students and ask um, it's a voluntary survey, so unfortunately we don't have 100% uh, response rate, but with the responses that we do receive, we publish the data um, on our website. And so if you go into any of the degree program pages for CS or any of our, our other programs, um, you'll see that we have a number of tabs and uh, we have a career outcomes tab where we do list uh, the alumni employment information there, just to give you an idea of the breadth and depth kind of of companies. Uh, that come and hire our students. So um, now in terms of our on-campus community, I really feel like students, <clears throat> it's really important for the university and for students to feel like they're part of a, a community. And we even have a, a term for the community. It's called the Trojan family. You know, so once you're admitted to USC and you enroll, um, you're part of this Trojan family for the rest of your life, really. Um, not only when you're in school, but then uh, when you graduate, you, you, you know, you're part of the Trojan network, so to speak. So um, this community on campus, there will be a number of activities in addition, obviously, to your studies to take, take per, to participate in. Um, and so we wanna make students feel like they're part of this community and just have a well-rounded experience while they're at USC um, pursuing their, their graduate studies. Um, we have recently, within the past uh, couple of years, launched a mobile app. It's for our students and it's uh, specific for, you know, Viterbi school students as well to communicate. And this has a, been a great um, addition for the students to be able to have, uh, to be able to look at what's coming up on campus, what's going on around the campus community and future events that are taking place. Um, and we also have our Viterbi Graduate Student Association. You see the emblem there on the bottom right. They are a student-run organization 
for the Turby School graduate students. So it's, it's made up of master's and PhD students who, um, who get together and they, they put on events uh, and, and host uh, fun activities for students because we want our students to feel like they're a part of this um, USC and Viterbi School community. The Viterbi Mentorship Program is another way where, uh, is another thing that we offer um, for students to help eliminate some of the maybe anxiety you may be having about coming uh, for some students who are coming far away. Um, this is a really great program that our uh, Student Affairs Office hosts. It will pair an incoming master's student with a current Viterbi grad student uh, as a mentor. And it's just someone to help you along the way um, and get you acclimated once you get to USC and the Viterbi School. So this is a program I definitely encourage the, um, to take advantage of. And you'll start getting information on all of this, uh, all of these things that I mentioned after, if you submit your intent to enroll, then you receive information on the mentorship program and all these campus activities and events. Um, that's when you really start receiving these, um, these emails about with it, that information. So the deadline to enroll, as I mentioned, um, should you decide to submit your intent to enroll. Um, most of you have an April 15th uh, commitment deadline. Um, so that's when you will want to submit your statement of intent and the commitment deposit. There will be some of you who have a May 1st. So I can't say, you know, by those of you admitted by a certain date, it's May 1st, those another date, April 15th. You will need to log into your U.SC um, uh, portal to view which commitment deadline you have. But again, most of you will have the April 15th uh, deadline for your commitment deposit. Uh, for those of you who have been more recently admitted, you might have that May 1st date, but um, definitely check uh, your letter admission for that information. Now, the sooner you submit, as I mentioned, your statement of intent, um, you'll get info on pre-orientation resources. Orientation will take place, I believe, the second week in August, um, but you will get information on specific dates. The Viterbi Mentorship Program, as I mentioned, um, you will get to connect with your department, and then um, information on housing as well will be delivered to you. Now, the USC System for Financial Documents has changed uh, very recently. You should have all received an email from, um, from the university about something called Trojan International. So this is specifically for our international students joining today. There is a new system in which students can submit their financial documentation. And so if you've been admitted uh, and you are an international student, you will have to resubmit if you have not already done so, your financial documentation through this Trojan International System. So please follow the steps in the email that our um, university office has sent regarding the Trojan International. Please be advised there is, there is a, uh, a little bit of a delay um, in terms of being able to submit. So you do have to um, go through a few steps before you're able to submit those financial documentations. But you definitely want to do this because this is how you will have your I-20 sent to you. Um, and that's what you need in order to um, come to USC. Okay, so, um, so next steps check out our website. Uh, we have a great virtual tour of campus to help, help yourself before coming to campus, um, get to know campus a little bit better. Student organizations, uh, there are over 700 within the university. Um, student safety and wellness resources. Wellness is huge and very important as well as safety um, for our students. And then um, international student support, we have a dedicated um, office for our international students. We do have uh, Viterbi student ambassadors. I do believe we do have an ambassador joining today, um, but definitely go on our website. We have a platform that we use to feature all of our student ambassadors. Should you know you come up with a question uh, after the webinar is, is over um, that you have for an ambassador, just simply go on our website. You can scan the code, take you directly to that page where you can um, chat with the Viterbi School Ambassador. These are students who are current master students. They've been in your shoes, know what it's like to make that decision. Uh, and, and you can ask them questions about their experience on campus and how they you know, got housing. Any type of question like that is, is fine. So definitely seek out um, our Viterbi Ambassador. So with that, um, that's all 
the housekeeping items that I have uh, for you right now. So I will stop sharing my screen and gladly uh, hand it over to Professor Medvedevich. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so I wanted to welcome everybody. Uh, I noticed there are over 240 people on this call, which is great. I'm very happy to uh, see such a, a massive turnout. Um, I just wanted to introduce you a little bit to kind of the academic side of the department, uh, say a few words, and then I will leave some time for any questions you may have. Um, I want to apologize ahead of time. I have to leave at uh, 9.30 on the button because I have another meeting, um, but uh, you will be in good hands, I'm sure. So we're, we're a very large department, as you've already heard. Um, or may have heard, we're definitely uh, also atypical, just like the rest of the university in that we have uh, a lot more graduate students than we do have undergraduates. Uh, between uh, master's and PhD students, we uh, probably have more than twice as many as, as we do undergrads. Uh, you will get a chance to um, experience a very large cohort uh, in a unique setting. The computer science department will be uh, moving to a new building sometime next year. So I have been in the department for a really long time. And uh, ever since I've been in the department, we've been uh, dealing with a little bit of a space crunch and have been distributed across multiple different buildings on campus. And when you arrive, most of you in the fall, you will still get to see the old building. But then as uh, the spring semester of 2024 and the summer of 2024 uh, start progressing, we'll slowly be migrating to uh, a new state-of-the-art uh, building. So you'll get to experience uh, kind of both uh, sides of the coin and you'll get to decide for yourselves what you like better. But uh, I, I have no doubt that the new building is going to be amazing and spectacular. Um, you, um, most of you are joining the uh, standard uh, CS master's program, uh, as far as I understand it. Some of you may be joining a particular specialty, but basically the program uh, is a 28 unit program, the uh, basic master's program. It um, gives you an opportunity to engage in research. Uh, other than that, uh, many of you will just choose to take classes, most likely. Uh, the classes themselves cover pretty much every facet of computing that you can imagine. Um, we have faculty who uh, teach and do research in areas spanning everything from AI, machine learning, uh, data science. So there, there is actually a specialization within computer science on um, CS uh, within data science. Um, we have people do, who do research in uh, networks. Um, uh, computer graphics, uh, software engineering, which is my area, programming languages, um, robotics, uh, computer vision, and on and on. I could I could go on probably for uh, quite a while longer. And uh, pretty much in any one of these areas, one or more courses are offered that you will be able to take. Um, so you will have a uh, really nice uh, palette of classes from which uh, you can choose. Uh, some of those classes are, by definition, going to be very, very popular. Nowadays, everybody seems to want to take classes in machine learning, for example. Uh, but there are lots of other classes that uh, could fit your specific needs and your specific uh, desired focus that uh, you will also find very uh, enriching and very rewarding. Um, you can get involved uh, in research projects. My recommendation to you, uh, given that this happens every semester, uh, students feel like they have time in their schedules uh, and room in their schedules as well, uh, to either participate in a research project or um, take units, research units, which you can apply actually toward your uh, degree. Uh, my recommendation is to get familiar with what various faculty uh, may do for their research. Um, if uh, you remember this when you arrive at USC, try to apply it. Uh, the kinds of uh, outreach attempts that do not work very well by students is when you send uh, just a, a generic message to uh, all faculty or a large number of faculty saying, hey, I took all these classes. I'd like to work on a, on a research project. 
Uh, the way you should engage is by either taking a class from a professor or uh, reading uh, publications that they may have in a given area and uh, reach out to them, uh, assuming that there are specific aspects of a problem you either find interesting or you feel like you, you can contribute to. Um, another surefire way of uh, uh, getting involved with a research project is to uh, engage PhD students who might be working in a given lab. Uh, and use that as a way of um, being able to get on a project and being able to uh, to participate. Uh, as far as um, other kinds of opportunities, I'm sure you will hear more about them, but uh, we're a very large department, as I already mentioned, and I don't want to belabor that too much, but what it results in, in is classes being very large themselves. So instructors uh, do tend to um, need a fair bit of help which results in uh, greater opportunities, um, course producer opportunities, and you'll be hearing uh, more about those. So I don't wanna uh, spend too much uh, of my time, of my slot on that. I wanna talk more about the, uh, the academics uh, themselves. Um, I can tell you that many uh, of our master students um, end up finding internships, uh, possibly most of them. I haven't looked at the statistics pretty much. Uh, uh, anybody who takes a master's or goes down the master's path at, at USC has a very good chance of securing employment, which is for many of you what you're uh, looking at, since this is, um, it is an academic degree, but it's an academic degree with a particular focus and, and goal, which is to get a job in uh, uh, the, the exploding IT uh, industry. Um, however, if you are interested in uh, Conducting research, you also, in addition to that, uh, can uh, find ways of publishing your work. So we've had master students who've worked on research projects uh, whose work has um, uh, been published, who have been co-authors on uh, on publications. Those kinds of things could uh, turn out to be uh, either a distinguishing factor for you when you're looking for a job, or they might convince you that you may actually want to pursue um, a career in uh, research in computer science, which is something that um, is, I can tell you from personal experience, highly rewarding, uh, but uh, it's it's a very individual uh, kind of decision and um, uh, different people feel about it differently. Uh, so um, without going through the curriculum, uh, because you can find a lot of that information online and um, what kinds of things you may or may not want to do in order to complete your degree within a particular time frame, which some of you may have questions about. Those are the kinds of things that uh, I think you may be hearing about uh, later today within, uh, within this webinar, because there are uh, several of our academic advisors are on this call, and they're much more qualified to answer those questions uh, than I am make sure that you you know that you are going to be welcome in the department that despite the fact that again this is a very large cohort of uh of students that you're going to be joining in every single one of you is uh, going to get as much uh, individual attention as you you may need some of you may feel like you're going to be fine and you won't need it and that's great uh you'll be able to navigate things uh smoothly and and kind of organically for those of you who end up having questions um my door is certainly always open. Uh, email works uh, just fine. If you have a, a specific question, always feel free to shoot me an email. I'll, I'll answer as quickly as I can. Um, for some of the things that, uh, some of the questions you may have, I may not be the best person to answer those. So sometimes I will redirect you to other people and that happens all the time. Uh, again, one piece of advice, just like with trying to get on a research project, if you want a quick answer to a question that you may have, try to figure out who the best person may be to answer that question. Um, reaching out to them directly is going to be more productive than um, just kind of stabbing in the dark and then hoping that somehow it's going to get routed to them. Uh, beyond that, uh, USC is a fantastic place to be at. Um, my children have both uh, gone to school there. My son is actually a master student uh, in our data science program uh, as we speak. Um, it, I can't speak highly enough of, of the university itself as a place to be. It's an incredibly international, diverse place. Uh, you will get to meet fantastic people from every corner of the world, pretty much. 
Um, and I myself have uh, really enjoyed and, and tremendously benefited of uh, having been there for nearly 25 years at this point. So uh, welcome once again. Uh, I hope that I know many of you have uh, choices beyond USC, but I do hope that you choose USC in the end. Um, you will uh, love it on, on our campus. You will love our new building. You will love your uh, colleagues, our staff, and our faculty. And uh, we can't wait to see you uh, next fall. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to thank Professor and Chair uh, Medvedevich <laughs> for the computer science department. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're very busy. So um, thanks again for joining. Of course. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I think next I'm going to throw it uh, over to our, <clears throat> our advisors. Uh, we do have a current student joining uh, as well. So start loading up with uh, questions. Um, but let me hand it off to uh, our advisors to maybe introduce and um, take it from here. So may, I'll, I'll start off with uh, Steve, if you don't mind. Hi, everyone. Congratulations on being admitted to USC. We're all really excited to eventually meet all of you. Uh, my name is Steve Pham. I'm one of the academic advisors for both the computer science and data science department. And um, I'll hand it to my team here to introduce themselves as well. Hello, everyone. Congratulations on your admission. My name is Norma Perry, and I'm also one of the advisors for computer science. I advise undergraduate and computer science students. Welcome, everyone. Hi, everybody. My name is Sabrina. I'm also with the computer science data science department. Welcome and congratulations. Good morning. Hello. My name is sorry, Cameron. No, uh -huh. go ahead. My name is Idania Takimoto, and I'm one of the CSCA advisors. Welcome and congratulations on your admission to USC. Hello, everyone. Welcome to USC. My name is Kimberly. I'm also in data science. Hello, everyone. My name is Flor Martinez, and welcome to USC. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Kim, and I'm on the advisement team. It's nice to virtually meet you. Hello, everyone. OK, it looks like we're going to get started with our student panel questions. Um, if the student panelists would like to introduce themselves. Not sure if it's just me, um, Chandini, but I, I don't think I could hear you. I, I don't know. Maybe folks give me a thumbs up if they could hear her. Okay. Still nothing. Okay, it looks like um, our student panelists will rejoin. So um, everyone just feel free to just give us a couple of minutes while she, she rejoins. Hopefully uh, she's able to work that out. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we, we can hear you now. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, I've enjoyed my work so far. Uh, you know, I am a Viterbi a student ambassador, and uh, I'm currently a graduate student of computer science. And um, yeah, I think it's a great morning. And 
it's wonderful uh, sharing this time with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if we have any other panelists. No, I think that's it. Um, our other panelists, unfortunately, was unable to join. But um, if I can maybe start the questions for, for Shandini. Um, can you tell me where you're from uh, and your journey to USC and the Viterbi School of Engineering? Yes. Uh, so I am from India, uh, particularly Bangalore. And um, uh, I uh, previously had around uh, three years of work experience. And then I realized to uh, realized that I wanted to pursue my master's. And um, that's that's how I'm here. I'm here to improve my skills, uh, you know, become uh, a better engineer. And um, there were certain uh, points, you know, within uh, specializations. The current specialization that I have is data science. And uh, the the curriculum and uh, the, the kind of uh, topics that it touched upon, it really interested me. And yeah, uh, that's how uh, I landed here. Oh, thank you for sharing and welcome again. Um, you. Can you take me through a typical, it, it, well, first, is this your, what, what's, how many semesters have you been here? So this is currently my third semester. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Um, can you take me through kind of a typical day? I know from day to day things change, but um, in terms of, you know, you have two classes or one class one day, one class another day, kind of what's your typical day like as a master's student? So currently throughout my semesters, I've been having two classes, two different subjects per week. So it would typically be, uh, you know, you, you're just going two days of the week and the rest of the days would be spent kind of following up with your academics, your assignments, or engaging with uh, various clubs or, uh, you know, doing various activities. There are a million activities around in campus and I love engaging with, uh, you know, uh, different hobbies. So, um, I think it it's it's just a very eclectic mix of interests uh, right now, and um, yeah, I think um, there's not a day where I was not busy. <laughs> you know, it's it's just always on the go, and uh, it it it's uh, it's really this is what keeps the entire student life interesting. So, um, I mean, a typical day with classes um, uh, would be you know me getting up, you know, getting ready. Uh, probably going to campus, preparing for class, attending class. And after that, if there's any campus activities, kind of engaging with them. And yeah, I think. Um, That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I only have one last question for you. I don't know if, if any of our panelists or, or, or admitted students joining have a question, but I just wanted to ask, you know, um, you said you're from Bangalore. What is something that you wish you would have known prior to coming to USC? Um, and how is it, uh, what you expected, different from you expected, kind of your experience? Um, yeah, so, okay. So I kind of, so I think mainly, you know, as an international student, uh, you know, the main fear uh, that I had personally was whether I would be able to blend in uh, in a new environment and uh, how I would be able to socialize and interact. But uh, surprisingly, I think um, it was it was very easy. And uh, I I also I mean I also I also my in fact my first um, you know best social interaction was in fact with. Uh, my, uh, you know, graduate student ambassador colleagues, I think, you know, that is when I kind of got, uh, you know, got the first hand experience with students from various diverse backgrounds. Um, and in turn, that kind of helps you to learn more, push your boundaries, look at things differently, and it enhances your professional aspects as well in future. So, um, uh, so that's what I, I, I was fearful of my expectations, but then I ended up, uh, you know, looking at the other side and finding something more beautiful. So, yeah. I'm so, that's, that's so great. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, thank um, you. 
<clears throat> do any of my um, my colleagues on on the advisor side have any questions for for Chandini or any um, questions in the Q and A? Let me scan. Sure, I have a question for Shandini. Um, you mentioned a little bit about the classes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how, what classes are like um, and how demanding is the coursework? Yeah, so currently um, as, a com uh, as a computer science student, um, it, so initially uh, you kind of have a set of courses, uh, you know, that you have to apply declearance for based on your choice. So, um, it's, it's uh, you know, from right from the beginning, you know, with my interaction with seniors, I was told to kind of go through each of the course curriculum, the requirements, and see if it matches your interests and your, uh, you know, probably you, whether you'd be able to take on two difficult courses or medium courses and uh, then apply. Um, and, and then typically, I think some of uh, the duration of the classes uh, in a particular day would be around three hours or two hours. I think it depends on the kind of course that you take. And um, also, uh, you know, two different courses uh, that you take, you know, that it, it's again, I think all of this management of courses and, you know, your choice, it kind of depends, uh, it, it's totally on you. And I think that's a great thing. We get to choose uh, what courses, which day, and we have various days assigned for different courses. It's not just on, uh, if, for example, my first class was the algorithms class, and we had two days dedicated for that particular course, so that if you take another course, uh, you know, it doesn't clash. Um, so, um, and I, and as far as the course structure or information uh, or the tests go, I think they are very well structured practically. And I think that was quite a difference from, um, you know, the, uh, my previous uh, educational formats, I could say. Um, and they are very assignment driven. So, you know, uh, I think I find myself kind of interacting more, uh, you know, devising ideas they're more free flow and flexible for us to kind of present um ideas differently and i think um uh yeah i, I it, it is it is quite a load if you take some uh, some courses but then at the end i i was i was kind of astonished by how much i learned in a short period of time great thank you for that thank you Sandini, I wanted to ask, um, you said that this is your third semester in the program. During like those third semesters, you probably took like around six courses by now. Do you have a favorite course? Yeah, so my favorite course, uh, so I kind of took machine learning, I think in my second semester. And uh, that was my favorite course. So even though I was in the computer science department, I kind of took machine learning from the data science department. It's, it's, we are allowed to do that within our course requirements. And uh, it's just, again, uh, it's the curriculum that I went through and uh, you know the various assignments and projects involved. So I, I think that course was really, really interesting. Uh, you know, various parts of the course were quite hands-on, and I think the professor used to provide very, uh, you know, sometimes very uh, funny but real-life anecdotes. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, that was my favorite course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing. And um, earlier you were mentioning that there are so many, like, events on campus, right, like social events and, like, um, club events and whatnot, but I know, especially at like USC Viterbi, they host a lot of like career events where like there's a lot of guest speakers and whatnot. Have you attended any of those events? Yes, of course. Um, I I think almost all of them uh, so far, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, you know attending uh, again attending those talks provided me an insight into something that I didn't know. Uh, you know, prob, uh, you know, possible previous misconceptions that I had, uh, the differences between job markets here in the U.S. and in India, uh, what is uh, more highlighted uh, during an interview, uh, 
here compared to you know my home country and uh, it helped me refocus my skills and kind of reshape my resume uh, so it was it was it was really interesting i love that for you thank you thank for you. sharing thank you and shandini we did have one question in the chat and i think maybe this will be the, the last question before you have some parting words uh and then we'll pass it to the advisors because we do have some questions coming in uh, which are great thank you so much the question from uh, that someone had for you in the chat do you feel like your work experience that you mentioned made the the pursuing your you know degree in, in data science has that helped uh so is it like uh did my work experience help me get an admit or did my oh no i think just did it help in your success uh with in in your classes right the, the question specifically was do you feel like your work experience made the cs degree easier right so um so to be honest, I think in my case, some part of my work experience did because I kind of uh, took up SD roles as well as a bit of data science roles as well, uh, you know, just before coming here. So the kind, some of the technologies that I engaged with were um, uh, that I saw in class, but um, I kind of saw different use cases of those technologies in the class, for example, machine learning for data science, uh, I would have used um, a particular technology, say, um, you know, a Spark or something, you know, uh, from an organizational viewpoint that kind of caters only to their uh, use case. And I would have been, um, I think, um, uh, what you, I single focused on, on its use case. But uh, I think once I came here, we were allowed to do projects that allowed us to explore, you know, where else I could use them and apply them. So um, I, I would say uh, some of the technologies and knowledge uh, that I used were kind of um, reused here, but they were enhanced. And I think um, anything in the technology space, it's an ever learning journey. So, um, uh, I think it just helped me widen my uh, knowledge. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. I, and I want to thank you again for, for taking time to join this morning. Um, uh, William, can I ask our student panelist one question really quickly? Because I think she'd have yeah. the insight. Good morning, Shandani. Um, one of the questions that we see quite repeated in our Q&A is students have questions about housing. So can you give us some insight on how you went about looking for your housing, how you got in contact with your current roommates, any tips that you can provide for them as they're coming into this new city and, and trying to find housing in our current situation? Yes, uh, sure. I think uh, searching for anything as a student, uh, you know, when it comes to your basic uh, requirements uh, would first be, um, you know, because they all require some financial uh, background. So, uh, so first it would be to kind of understand how much, um, how, how much money are you willing to put aside for housing and then decide the type of housing that you want to go to. So from there, I would, uh, so I was uh, a bit uh, fearing because this was my first time living alone. And also uh, I was fine spending a little um, money, you know, if, um, you know, for, for having a location very close to campus and more amenities than normal. So um, I so we have the option for on-campus and off-campus housing. I decided to go for the on-campus housing uh, in our Troy buildings, um, and I had a very great experience. And uh, after that, I think when once I made friends, I moved to off-campus housing. And when it comes to the housing search, I think the easiest uh, way would be. Uh, there are various ways for on-campus housing. You can visit the USC on-campus housing website, email them. I think they are very, very responsive. Initially, when I wanted to get into the housing, I think I sent over 10 emails and I always got a response from them. And um, when it comes to off-campus housing, I, I think there are various websites you could use uh, you know, to contact the owners. And uh, also students sublease their spaces and um, you could contact your seniors through WhatsApp groups. 
um, I think it's it's all a way of us figuring out uh, your needs and um, and then fitting ac according to that. So yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sandini. Thank um, you. <laughs> I did want not I didn't want to ignore some of the questions coming in the Q and A for our advisors. Um, I do want to ask if any advisor wants to maybe just can you explain what happens when a student when they decide to enroll, just the process as an incoming CS student, what happens to look out for in the email regarding registration, like how that works um, for a new student. And if you can just kind of, if one of you can go over that process, because um, I know that that question comes up a lot, like, what do I do? Am I waiting for an email or when do we register? Yeah, well, and that's a great question. So for all incoming students, um, the, the way our department works is, since we have such a large student population and we want to ensure that our students are able to get their required courses, every incoming student in a specialization will receive an email with their pre-cleared classes. So these students don't have to worry about um, registering or I guess requesting D clearance on their own. And for just students that aren't aware, D clearance just means departmental clearance. All of our 500 level courses do require departmental authorization before you can enroll in the class. So for any graduate level student, you do need to receive departmental clearance from our department first before you could enroll. Um, one thing to be, I guess one note to clarify is that be, just because you receive departmental clearance, that doesn't mean that you are automatically enrolled in the class. Uh, when, when you receive an email from our department, our department saying, you've been given D clearance for the algorithms class or the machine learning class or whatever class uh, we pre-clear for you, uh, you would actually have to go into web registration, which is our website for students to enroll in their classes. So it's kind of a two-step process. You'll get an email from our department before you start um, in the semester. And then once you get information regarding which courses you've been pre-cleared for, you would just go into web registration and then register for the classes on your own. So most students should be, or I guess all students should be getting multiple emails from our department sometime in July. I believe the start of the semester is mid-August. So we usually give students a, a month and a half to two months buffer um, to allow them to register in the classes that they need to be in um, so they, they could graduate on time. And then um, any other advisor, if I missed anything, just feel free to add on to that. Did, does that answer your question, William? Yeah, no, I think it's great to try to paint a picture about sure. what to expect, um, you know, what are the next steps kind of um, just to eliminate some of the unknown, as, as I mentioned. Um, I do see questions in the chat. I do want to ask, uh, I see a couple of questions regarding research. Um, for students who either want to pursue research just to do research or maybe want to pursue research in mind for a PhD later, um, how would a master's student, as research is not a requirement in order to graduate, um, but I know that student master's students are allowed to do research, how do they go about reaching out to, to find how to do research or find a faculty member? What would you recommend or advise? Um, William, we actually have two courses that students can take. One of them is the CSCI 591. That's our colloquial. Um, basically, it's different uh, speakers coming in each week to talk about their research. And we find that course to be more for students that are not sure about like what type of research or topic they would be wanting to do research. I think that's a really good introduction to research. Um, if the student is already pretty much sure of what they want to do research on, we also offer the direct research course, which the students can take up for a maximum of two units per degree. Um, and that one is basically the student is working one on one with the professor. Um, we have further information on our website as far as um, how to request the clearance and the logistics of enrolling in that course. Um, but basically, we do tell students, um, master students, that they definitely do have an opportunity to do research, um, either with directly with one on one with our, our faculty or also join one of the labs that we have. Um, so definitely research opportunity is available for our master student. Excellent. Thank you so much, Floor. Um, I see another question. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna focus on maybe specific question, but on a more general um, level. Is it possible to switch from someone admitted to CS General to another specialization? Yes, actually, that is possible. Um, we do recommend students to first finish their first term 
in the program that they were admitted into. Um, if the student, let's say, for example, was admitted to the general program and they're interested in a specialization, uh, once they complete their uh, first semester successfully with a 3.0 or above GPA, uh, they are welcome to switch into specialization. Just send in a quick email to our Viterbi service desk, let them know, and we can process that for the student. Great. Thank you, Norma. Um, research yes. assistantship, teaching assistantships, are those available for master's students? Or if they're not, are there any opportunities kind of on a similar scale? That might be so we do offer greater positions, um, course producer positions. So those are very popular amongst our master's students. Um, in regards to TA ships, RA ships, um, we do currently have our computer science honors program. So if there are spa like spaces for TAs after our PhD students, um, then those who are in the honors program may have the opportunity to apply as well. But more commonly, we do see our graduate students in those greater and course producer positions. Thank you, Sabrina. You touched on the honors program. Do you mind just explaining quickly what that what that is? Yeah, so um, after our students have completed at least eight units of coursework um, and they have you know a 3.9 GPA or higher, then they are eligible to apply for our honors program. Um, so generally speaking, our students do take eight units within their first semester. So after those grades are posted and you have a GPA here at USC, you may be eligible to apply and the department will send out emails when those applications are open. Thank you. Um, and my colleague uh, Ray actually put the link to the CS Honors Program in our chat. Um, so if you go to the chat, you can see the link to that, that CS Honors Program that Sabrina was talking about. And then Steve uh, also added in the chat information on the research areas um, and labs that are within the CS department. Um, let me see. So. Some of these courses are, are pretty specific. Um, or, so pardon me, some of these questions, not courses. Courses are always specific. So let me see. Um, are students allowed to take interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary electives from another program? Or does that kind of depend on what they're admitted? Yeah, so it does depend on the program or the specialization that they are in. Um, we do have a short list of approved non-computer science courses that um, some of our degree programs are allowed to take, but they are limited to generally one non-CS course um, that has to do with a lot of rules with their degrees and, and certain requirements to satisfy, but there are some opportunities for students to take um, what we would consider non-computer science courses. Um, more popular ones would generally be in the data science program, which is, um, as we mentioned earlier, you know, very close to our program. So um, those are usually the ones that our students go for. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I have a question. It's regarding the scientists and engineers program. Does that go into the same depth as the regular, uh, in quotes, computer science uh, program? If not, what are the discrepancies? If you could just explain kind of the, I know what it is, but I think it's better hearing from you what the difference between the scientists and engineers and the CS general track. I mean, yeah, that's a great question. So in, in general, the computer scientists and engineer students are taking the exact same classes as the general CS track. Um, for students that aren't aware in, for, uh, in terms of a curriculum, for the CS general track, you only are required to take one specific course. That's CSCI 570, which is our anal uh, um, analysis of algorithms class. Um, so it's only one class, and then the rest of your courses are electives. I, I believe our student panelists mentioned today that you really do get the freedom and flexibility to take the electives and courses of your own choosing, depending on what your career interests are, your educational trajectory, whatever things that you want to take, um, those six electives um, are available for you to take. Um, for the sciences and engineers track, you are also required to take CS 570. And then you are you also also have six electives for you to take as well. Um, CSES or sciences and engineers is a little bit different though, because you are required to take um, three other classes. The three other classes include um, the intro to programming, which is 455. 
and students also take operating systems, and then they also take an EE class. So in terms of the actual electives and the required coursework, you're going to be taking um, at a minimum everything the CS general track will take, but you will have extra classes on top, typically because students in the CS ES program um, don't have the same they typically they don't have a computer science undergraduate degree. So their background and experience and um, mastery of computer science and programming might be a little bit different from our general track, but in terms of the coursework, it, it's very similar. Great. Um, I do want to respect everyone's time. We have about a little under five minutes, uh, five minutes left. So um, I do have a question that came in, a little bit of a lighter question. Can a, can, a, can a student take a single course in multiple semesters or is the student allowed to do this only once? I don't know whether they're international student or not. It doesn't say, but um, if anyone can talk about that and um, sure, I can, um, William. Um, so basically, um, all all USC students at the master levels are given up to five years. USC gives up to five years to complete their degree. Um, so to be honest with you, most of our students, um, it, obviously, if they're doing full time, they usually graduate in two years. Um, our dense students, we do expect them to only enroll in one course per semester, um, and that includes fall and spring. Um, keep in mind that summer semesters are optional, but students, I, I've been with the department for a few years now. Um, to be honest with you, I, I think the, the most that students take is usually three years. But again, our students, our USC gives students, uh, master students up to five years to complete the degree. However, um, if the student is an international student, then, you know, the student then is dealing with their I-20 when it expires. And so then, that oversees obviously the USC policy, um, but can students be part-time? Yes, the department is fine with the student being part-time as long as the student you know, is a domestic student, they can be part-time. Um, in regards to international student, they would have to obviously contact the VASE office in regards to um, filing for an RCL for that given semester. But we do allow um, students to be part-time as long as um, they're domestic student, that's not a problem. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Flora. And I was hoping that yeah, you you kind of mentioned the distinction distinctions between domestic and international, um, and just the visa requirements involved. Um, in terms of RCL, reduced course load, is it possible for a student to work, an international student to work, while doing reduce reduced course load for a semester? I believe that question, um, the student would have to contact the VASE office. Okay. We don't oversee RCL, so we don't know what the immigration policies are in regards to what the student is restricted to do, um, or is it's not allowed to do, I should say, um, while they're doing well, they're in RCL. So okay. that to the VASE office. Mm -hmm. okay. um, unfortunately, we are kind of running out of time. I do want to let everyone know that um, this webinar is being recorded. so. I definitely encourage you, uh, we'll have it posted on our website probably within the next day or two um, for you to review. If you want to go back, I encourage you to, I have slides at the beginning for those of you who maybe joined a little bit later and went through some of uh, introductions about USC in general, life in Los Angeles, things like that. Um, so I'll <clears throat> encourage you to review the presentation. A video recording that that we'll have on our website in the next day or two. It'll be posted on our newly admitted student page um, that you've been sent information about. Um, I do want to thank all of the advisors that joined today, taking time out. Um, you know, we couldn't do our jobs without you, uh, and so it's it's really helpful to have you just kind of as a knowledge base for for us. Um, Shandini, our student ambassador, thank you so much. Um, invaluable resource. And I definitely encourage our, our students, you know, I, I apologize if we weren't able to get to all of your questions um, <clears throat> today. But again, encourage you, seek out our, our student ambassador uh, webpage that I mentioned, um, where we have student ambassadors who, again, know what it's like. They want to give back, like Shandini, she's, you know, she's giving back. Um, they've been in your position, um, so uh, seek them out as well. But thank you so much to all who have joined. I will have to. Um, end the webinar officially now. Um, but again, congratulations 
on your admission to the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Um, we're really excited to be able to offer you admission. And with that, we say fight on and um, have a wonderful rest of your day. So bye-bye, fight on.